I have some unfortunate news. I didn't think I would have to make this video so soon, but unfortunately it's happened sooner than expected. Hence, this video. That's right, I have to take apart my winch and find out why it's not working properly. What did you think I was talking about? And what's this? And who's that? Puffy. And where the hell am I? So this is a worn £10,000 winch, and I bought it brand new from ARB when they were doing some kind of end of year sale. You should know better than to think I'd pay full price for a winch. And you should also know by now that I wouldn't fit a King's winch or similar to my vehicle. Anyway, it's never been used for recovery. Or much at all, in fact. I can count its times used on one hand, and the most I've done with it was to lift my lathe out of a trailer when I moved it. More on that in another video. Brought to you by OSHA. So what are the symptoms? Well, most of the bad things are related to the clutch and how to disengage the line. It likes to choose when it wants to do this. Sometimes it'll engage and disengage, other times it won't. And the worst thing is, when you try to make it disengage and it decides it doesn't want to disengage until you're halfway through using the winch, and then it'll decide it wants to go into freewheel mode. Now obviously, that's not ideal. So my plan is to remove it, strip it, and see what needs to be done. And I'm guessing it just needs something lubricated inside. I don't think anything's broken, unless it was worn from the factory. Get it? So this should be a pretty straightforward process. So if you're interested, it'll also show you how one of these worn winches works. It's time for a montage.
You might be thinking to yourself, there are easier ways of doing that, and you'd be correct. But for some reason, I can't find my circlip pliers, so I can't really take off the hook. And it would be a million times easier if the clutch on this thing was working so I could just pull the rope out. But such is this winch. <laughs> So this is what we're working with. Seems pretty grubby to be honest, but I don't think it's too bad. At least that's the way it is on the outside. I'm sure there'll be many number of horrors to be found inside, especially for the reason why this thing won't turn past halfway. So I guess the first step is to take it off this weird little plinth and see how it goes from there. Now this thing is one of those reasons why I think Toyota bars are the best ones you can get because they've got this little mounting plate that makes it so much easier for taking the winch in and out. But we don't need that now. So that's the main body of the winch looking nice and crusty. This side's the motor. If it's the same as any of the other ones I've done, there's a spindle running through the middle that operates this reduction gearbox. So this will spin at like a thousand RPM, which will then get reduced down and you'll end up with the slow spinning winch like you normally see. Now this is gonna need quite a lot of cleanup because it's pretty rusty in there. So let's find out how deep this problem goes. I'll probably strip both sides just to make sure everything's okay anyway. So yeah, this has definitely had some water in it at some point. Looks delightful in there. But this is what I was talking about with the spindle. I can spin the spindle really fast and the gears inside move very slowly. And that gives you your pulling torque. Anyway, the gearbox needs to come apart much further than this to be able to get to the clutch mechanism. It's nice to see how delicious all these things are looking. Mm -mm -mm. Now luckily at the moment this just seems to be goopy muddy shit and there doesn't seem to be that much corrosion going on in there. So hopefully if I wipe all this nonsense off, replace it with grease, we'll be good to go again. Now this is the bit that I'm mostly concerned with. This is the bit that engages and disengages the spool. And as you can see it's still not turning. But if you give it a whack, it kind of works. So that's just going to be a case of strip it, clean it, degrease it. But it almost feels like it's kind of cocking over on one side, like when you tap in a bearing too much on one side. So this could be a little bit more sinister. We'll see. Yep, pretty much that. Full of shitty gritty nonsense. I think when I seal this thing up again, I'm going to put gasket goop on it because I don't want anything getting in here again. Now, by the powers of video editing, this is now considerably cleaner than it, than it was. And that's also how it's supposed to work until the fucking handle falls out. It's pretty similar to a freewheeling hub. As you can see, it'll engage on the splines now but then as you, move, as you engage the clutch, 
it moves the gear wheel further away so it disengages, meaning that the motor will turn but the gearbox won't. Now I'm going to use molly grease for this, it's probably not the exact grease you're supposed to use, but so what? It's not like this is difficult to do. So seeing as how bad and muddy all this stuff was with the gearbox, I'm probably going to take off the spindle and have a check in the motor, just to make sure. Because while I'm here, why not? So I think I'm pretty lucky with the motor side, because this grease actually still looks like grease. So I don't think there's any need to go further than this. I'll just clean up around the outside and put this end back together. I am going to give this a bit of a paint though, because it's a bit corroded. I'd rather not leave bare metal now that I've sanded it off. So I'll put a bit of zinc on there to act as a little barrier, as well as give it a bit of rust protection. So, amateur painters. Are you ready to be triggered? Actually, on second thoughts, I'm probably going to take the motor apart. Mostly because that bearing doesn't exactly give a good indication of whether water's got in or not. So, if I take off the back of it, I can see the bushes and the bearings and things and see how they look. So with the joys that are off-camera shenanigans, I found one of these bushes to be seized in there. What it's supposed to be like... ...is this out-of-focus nightmare. So running through the middle is a spindle, which has all your coils and stuff on it, and contacting each one of these brushes. Now there's four on this one, and I found that one of them was completely seized up. So with a combination of swearing, degreaser, and rust remover, I've managed to get them all moving again. Whether this will make much of a difference, I don't know, probably not. But at least it's something that was shit that is no longer shit. Alright, now that that hideous task's out of the way, what I've ended up doing is sealing up everything on this with horrible goop and obviously leaving all the drain holes usable. So with any luck, that'll stop anything getting in. And there's two drain holes, which presumably is for airflow or something, but they'll still function. But all these places where there were no seals will no longer suck in a load of crap. So from here, it's time to grease stuff up and chuck it back together and hope that it still works. So thanks to my camera battery, so thanks to the wonders of video editing, the whole winch is now back together and ready to go back in the car. But first, let's check out some slick, winchy action. So as if by magic, it's a new day, and I have different clothes on, and it's just about time to throw this back in the car. So that's what I'm gonna do.
the worst one is always the shorter one. So it's probably impossible to see, but all the wiring has been done. So I better hook it up and see if it actually does anything at this stage when it's easy to pull out again. And there you go. Well, I hope that was educational for you. Now you know how to strip and rebuild a winch using questionable methods. Now, after checking the time, I've realized that it's time to go and save a small village.